Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for May 25th, 2023. In this video, we're going to be looking at the overall weather pattern over the next seven days because there is a pretty big warm-up in place across the northern tier of the United States, including Canada, and then we will be looking at the latest on Typhoon Mawar, that is a 180 mile an hour typhoon. Now, if you are new and you like these videos, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So to start things off, here's a look at your current weather conditions right now as of May 25th, 2023. I always like starting off my videos like this because this gives us an idea of what is going to be coming for the next few days. So we're going to first look at the southeast since we have somewhat a 10% chance of a subtropical system that may try to form. It really is disorganized by all standards, but nevertheless, it is bringing some showers and some thunderstorms right now across Florida. So if you are in, say, Tampa, Florida, if you're in Ocala, Florida on I-75 going south, you're looking at some showers, some thunderstorms. Some of these are producing some small hail, maybe even some larger hail. And then south of Yaha there near Junction, uh, over uh, basically across uh, Lake Okeechobee there. Um, that's where you are seeing uh, some of the heavier rainfall, some strong winds associated with those. Part of the sea breeze too this afternoon. Going further north here across the Carolinas, this is where we are seeing more showers and thunderstorms moving onshore as we are starting to see easterly winds there, temperatures there in the mid to upper 70s across Wilmington, Jacksonville on I-40, I-95 going south is where we are seeing some partly cloudy skies, some times of showers, and maybe a pop-up storm or two, but otherwise not too bad there. Now let's go and look at much of the high plains here. We're going to start looking at say Wichita Falls. This is where we do have a couple of pop-up thunderstorms across Frederick, across Alta. If you're in Wichita Falls there, uh, about 80 degrees right now, but we do have some intense discrete storms capable of producing uh, one to two inch hail and some gusty winds. And then of course, we're looking at pop-up storms uh, going on across um, Portions there were much of Nebraska as well as Kansas, north of I-70 on I-80, Grand Island, North Platte. If you are in Norfolk, Columbus there, we're seeing some scattered showers and thunderstorms, maybe some small hail and some gusty winds with those. Some more showers and thunderstorms are popping up across much of the Great Basin, including for Idaho, Montana, into Wyoming, as well as Nevada, down here across Salt Lake City. The afternoon monsoon is in full swing. In fact, if we go and look at the Sierras, we're seeing quite a bit of lightning strikes, some strong towering thunderstorms. Actually, when I was coming home from my haircut, I looked east and there were some big billowing cumulonimbus clouds, which indicate that there are some strong thunderstorms at this time across California and Nevada region. So just be weather aware um, if you're doing anything outdoors, storms could move over your area without warning or little warning at all. That's a look at your current weather. Let's take a look now at your weather maps. So here's a look at the latest European model for Thursday afternoon, May 25th, 2023. And like always, this is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing the showers and thunderstorms popping up across the central high plains. We got some showers and thunderstorms, part of the monsoon that is just hanging around across Nevada, across Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, also for um, Salt Lake City, Utah, including for the Sierra Mountains of California. California. So watch out when thunder roars go indoors. We also got showers and thunderstorms going on across again uh, portions there of Florida or actually much of Florida perhaps across Ocala, Orlando and then of course across these um, the Carolinas. Now in about a couple of days here actually let's go into Friday afternoon for May the 26th. The monsoon continues across the Intermountain West, across the Northern Rockies, the Southern Rockies, the Southern High Plains including Western Texas. Got showers and thunderstorms expected for tomorrow. Again these storms will be capable 
especially across western Texas, western Oklahoma, and western Kansas. These storms could be capable of producing a significant hail, possibly one or two inches in diameter, some very strong winds that could reach 65 miles an hour, and maybe a tornado or two. But otherwise, it's that time of year where we do see these pop-up storms from time to time. We also got some showers and thunderstorm activity for the southeastern United States. But hey, go north. It looks pretty dry thanks to an Omega block that is in place. By Sunday afternoon, same ordeal. Showers and thunderstorms, part of that. I don't know if you can call it a subtropical or extratropical, whatever you want to name it. Very weak, not going to be a huge problem for the time being, but it will bring quite a bit of rainfall across the Carolinas for your Saturday afternoon, May the 27th, with the monsoon ongoing across the Inner Mountain West. We go into Monday and also into Tuesday, same ordeal, pop-up storms each and every day. Uh, and that's why there's not really a lot to talk about, right? Because, again, the pulsating effect here, morning clear skies, dry conditions, afternoon storms and rain and hail that sort of thing that is anticipated so now the bigger deal will be the temperatures it's gonna be very warm across the northern tier of the united states especially if you are in say hudson bay if you're in quebec ontario if you're even across manitoba alberta canada british columbia gonna be really warm uh for the next um several days perhaps because we're in this pattern where there's an omega block that's where there's a cutoff ridge to the north and we got this jet stream kind of diving underneath it and so the ending result will be these warm temperatures so by say let's go into friday afternoon temperatures over here in the 80s maybe mid 80s just for reference, the Central Valley will have cooler temperatures than areas, say, like southern um, Ontario and Quebec, Canada, southern portion there of Saskatchewan and Manitoba, Canada, will be truly warmer than the Central Valley in California, which typically is one of the warmer spots. Can get up to 105, 115 degrees during the summertime. Here we are in the upper 70s this time of the year. So it's not going to be all that bad if you think about it, if you're in the Central Valley. But really warm up here across Canada. Look at this. The deep south temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, low 90s, even some 80s up there in central western Canada. This is going to continue all the way through the weekend. So Sunday going to be very warm. Look at this. Mid to upper 80s perhaps across um, portions there of Manitoba as well as even southern Quebec and Ontario, Canada really going to be warm so summer heat is in full swing and that's going to stick around for a while and look at the temperature gradient here you're over the water here of hudson bay thinking eh, it's not even that hot at all um you know and then you get onshore here uh where it's a lot warmer all right you got temperatures in the mid to upper 80s so a huge spread in temperatures from those two locations because of the temperature gradient because the uh, basically lake on uh, or not Lake Ontario. Hudson Bay is usually very cool this time of the year. Still, the ice is still melting. So it gets, you keep water on the really cool side. So if you go swimming, just be aware of that. Really warm, huge warm up in store for the upper Midwest and for the deep south here. Temperatures in the upper 80s, low 90s. That's going to continue for a while, perhaps. Maybe even some mid 90s over St. Louis, even Illinois going to be muggy too. These dew points are going to make it feel pretty miserable to say the least with dew points in the mid 60s. That's going to make it feel even warmer than it should. In fact, your apparent temperature forecast here calls for it that it might feel like the mid to upper 90s perhaps wouldn't be surprising. So keep that in mind. Um, make sure you drink plenty of water. So really quickly, I wanted to show you all the temperature anomaly forecast. Again, um, like I said, well above average temperatures up here, anywhere between 5 to 20 degrees above normal, while um, if you are in the southeast, if you are in the deep south, and much of the west here of California, Nevada, you're going to have temperatures anywhere between 5 to 15 degrees below normal for this time of the year, which it's strange. I mean, this could almost be like an El Nino pattern because we got the jet stream that's doing like this, right? And then we got the flow that's going up like this and coming right back down. 
That's going to be my thumbnail, by the way, because we have this huge ridge in place that is just not letting up across Canada, Hudson Bay, and the northern tier of the United States. And that's going to stay with you all through the next five to ten days here. The one or the five day average anomaly forecast still calls for anomalously warm temperatures across the northern tier of the United States, including for Canada. And if that's not enough, here's a look at the ensemble forecast. Let's go over there and see with what we have. And you can see well supported here on the ensemble from the European with temperatures that are going to be quite far above average, even extending our reach beyond this. Uh, it's going to still be warm there through the next 14 days, perhaps, while it stays cool across the Intermountain West, including for California. Another thing that I really want to discuss in this video is Super Typhoon Moir. Winds are at 180 miles an hour right now, and pressures estimated to be as low as 905 millibars. That is absolutely catastrophic, absolutely exceptional. Uh, it is very, very rare to get a typhoon this strong in the Western Pacific this early in the typhoon season. And as you can see here from the Hamari 9 Channel 13 IR satellite imagery, showing you a very intense eye wall surrounded by cloud tops that are anywhere between negative 75 to negative 80 degrees Celsius. Boy, if this was headed right for Guam, this would be absolutely devastating catastrophic and possibly even deadly something this strong you don't see very often here's another look at the visible satellite imagery on um super typhoon mawar right now again 180 you can see very intense eye wall there light future even a whirlpool with almost clear skies in the middle of the eye so just showing you the power of how strong mawar actually is right now another way we can see how strong this actually is is looking at the adt uh intensity estimate now what you're seeing here is just an estimate it is stronger than this for sure we're looking at winds up to about 146 knots but when i do the conversion because uh if we go to zoomearth.com here we can see that winds are much stronger and i'm not hyping this up folks this is a very very devastating typhoon by all means and so when we zoom in on this you can see there it is at 180 miles an hour. I don't know if you all can see that. And pressure is just updated 903 millibars. So almost down into the uh, 800s uh, in that degree of pressure. And it is expected to slightly strengthen a little bit more today before it levels off and slowly begins to weaken. That's a look at an update on Mawar. Well, if this video helped you out a lot and you like these detailed weather forecasts on a daily basis, please consider subscribing if you're new. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly recommend doing so. Hitting the like button if you like today's video and share this video with your family and friends on social media and leave a comment in the section below. I will have much more for you probably tomorrow afternoon and evening. Until next time, thank you all for watching. As always, I am David Schlotthauer. Have a, rest, uh, have a great rest of your day on this Thursday.